Yes, Haikyuu is pulling a Promise Neverland. And it is terrifying. This is an anime. This is a shonen anime about boys playing volleyball and stuff. And it is truly, it, it, over the top, the fourth season was my anime of the year back in 2020. And it's by Production IG and it's a fantastic anime. And it looks like with a hundred chapters still left to adapt. I couldn't believe hearing that. A hundred chapters still left to adapt. They are going to wrap this story up with a two-part movie finale. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Promised Neverland, season one, was one of my all-time favorite first seasons of any show. Promised Neverland season one was the bee's knees. And I already did two videos about this, but season two was like the biggest tragedy in all of anime, I feel. Because if you went to the manga, you could see one, they didn't adapt one of the best arcs in all of Shonen history, in my opinion, is fantastic. And they just completely skipped it. And then two, they sped run the rest of the manga by making an anime original version of it and just seriously just speed ran it. And that's, that's how Promise Neverland season two became the tragedy of the, the tragedy of anime or whatever 2021 or whatever it aired i think that's when it aired so haikyuu is having this two movie part finale next year in 2023 about a year from now actually they say the kickoff is in august that's at least what they plan for and that is freaking terrifying to me I, like it just depended because if you watch the anime currently, you know season four ends with essentially another big match is about to go down. Uh, I don't think it's that big of spoilers, but just but just nutshell is the main characters are about to get into a, a match with a very classic rival of theirs. Matches in this show, especially if they're an important one, they typically last. Sometimes they're just one or two episodes, but that's usually if it's a not that important one. Most of the time, they last for like three to 12 episodes. Unless you're like in season four, where it literally was like the entire back half of the season. I think season three, that's actually what season three was. It was like, that was the entire season. Yeah, so. Something ain't right. And from what I hear, there is more than one match to cover still left in the manga. Again, the important matches usually take 3 to 12 episodes. And there is still more than one match to adapt from the manga. If these movies are two hours long, that typically gives each of the movies around five or six episodes length's worth. That's 12 episodes. That's the length of a single match. <laughs> so it is terrifying, dude. Like, there's no way they can adapt these movies without cutting out content, which is tragic. And it can be done, you know. I, I don't... I personally do not mind cut content. I do not mind cut content. What I do mind is it feeling very unnatural and like especially different from what has come previous. I love the pacing of Haikyuu. Yes, the matches go on and on and on, but it's entertaining throughout. I don't mind it at all. So if they do the, these movie versions where the matches are like 20 minutes each or 30 minutes each or something, it's gonna be hard. But it's possible. Is it possible? I just want to say that. Yes, it is absolutely possible that this two movie adaptation, you know, if they cut out a lot of stuff and really keep things going and don't drag anything out longer than it needs to be or whatever, then it's possible. They absolutely could hit it out of the park. I have doubts about that, but it's absolutely possible. My biggest sadness, however, if they even do pull that off, is High Q is an anime that a lot like to experience live like it's a show and this was the exact fear i had about attack on titan which i did a video about that too i was really worried that attack on titan from manga readers they were telling me you know like there's still a lot for them to adapt and they only got like four episodes left i'm like okay so there has to be more they're either going to do like some big tv or they're going to do some big movie finale or have another season or something Luckily, they got the season, which is great, but if they went the movie route, I was going to be really sad. While that would have been epic to watch with people in a live audience, that limits it to only those that go to the event instead of those that want to watch it at their home as they're used to. 
and that's what high q is gonna have to do all the high q fans now those matches that's gonna be super fun to watch with an audience don't get me wrong but them being forced to is what i don't like i don't like that there will be spoilers going around for those that can't get to a theater i will be mad that those that are tr that you know their friend got to experience it but they didn't somehow like I don't like that lack of accessibility that fans have had up to this point. I love anime films, I love movies, but I hate the idea of locking a season or a conclusion or anything behind that movie theater experience. It's why I really appreciate that Demon Slayer season two, they, they adapted the movie, you know, that a lot of people saw, but I didn't. I never got to go to the theater to watch it. But I really appreciate that they made the start of the second season just recapping the movie. That's the first six episodes of the second season. They just split the movie up into six episodes. That was awesome. Thank you for doing that. But the problem is that nobody cared. <laughs> nobody cared, you know, years later. They cared about the new stuff. They cared about the entertainment district arc. But when the the train episodes were airing. I didn't hear anybody talking about it. They were just talking about the entertainment district because it was new. But when the train stuff was happening and I was super hyped, I'm like, dude, that fight with between the number three, like that was, that was sick. Oh my God, it was emotional, but nobody wanted to talk about it because they already saw it. So people like me that, you know, didn't get to go to a theater to watch it or didn't go to a theater to watch it. We're out of the hype now. Even if somehow they pull it off, it to me is very sad to think that there will be folks, you know, like that, even if somehow they do bring it to a crunchy roll or whatever, at least there's that, you know, but even if they do that, it's still going to be months or maybe even years later until they do because they have to make the theatrical run happen first. But anime is a lot more tricky than that because a lot of times the anime will show up in Japan first and then have limited screenings in like the US and other places. So it's just, it's just a deboggle. Not only do they have over a hundred chapters, a hundred chapters to adapt, but they also have the limited experience that is the movie theater. It's scary. It's a demon slayer. It's a promised Neverland. It's, it's a scary situation, especially if you're a fan of like Haikyuu like I am, because I freaking love that show. That's when the season's coming back, I do want to do a video about Haikyuu, a very deep video essay. So make sure you subscribe for that. Chat with me in the comments about it. Let me know what you think. And this is a video YouTube thinks you'll like. So go over there and check that boy out. I will see you soon. Westside Otaku.